I've been warning for years about where all the restrictions on free speech were headed. That our stifling of culture and liberty, once begun, would reach truly totalitarian levels. And now we're here. Lenin's regime had nailed its colours to the mast right from the outset. Just days after seizing power, Lenin issued a decree authorising censorship before creating a Bureau of Propaganda and a Department of the Press. All press freedoms were to be ruthlessly crushed. The Cheka, the forerunner of the KGB, was quickly established. And they too swiftly revealed their lack of tolerance. When Bim Bom the Clown told a few anti-Soviet jokes, they shot him on stage during a live performance of the Moscow Circus. Now, we're not quite at that level, but our own draconian restrictions get worse every day. The comedian Joe Lysett was just dragged over the coals by the police after a single complaint about a joke he had told during a live performance. But worse swiftly followed. James Watts, a 31-year-old policeman, was jailed for 20 weeks for sharing jokes about George Floyd in a private WhatsApp group. I warned that exactly this was coming nearly two years ago, and I was roundly mocked and derided for it. Well, now here we are. And the fact that this event, that sending a man to prison for telling jokes in private, isn't a bigger story, is even more alarming. It's almost expected, considered kind of acceptable. And of course, it's our liberal elites, our new establishment, our own Soviet commissars, who'll decide which jokes are acceptable. Because they can carry on being as edgy as they like. But any non-party members better watch out. Joe Brand can joke about hurling acid in Nigel Farage's face. And Sophie Duker can brag about killing Whitey. And they know they're not risking prison. In fact, they'll just get invited back on TV with a hefty pay rise. And look, I'm not arguing that Brand or Duker should face any kind of sanctions. Because I believe in free speech. They should absolutely have the liberty to joke about what they want. To be as unpleasant as they like. But so should the rest of us. Yet we don't. We live in a two-tier society, where a closed and incestuous little group has decided that they can do what they want, and the rest of us better step into line, or else. But this is nothing but the death of culture, the death of expression, and the death of freedom. British comedy has led the way for a century. From Charlie Chaplin through Monty Python to The Office, it's perhaps the most cherished legacy we have. But now we just get identikit finger-wagging bores like Nish Kumar dribbling on about how awful Boris Johnson and Brexit are, while lecturing us about racism and trans rights. And they can do what they want, but we need an alternative. There's endless comedy about Trump and the Tories. But none at all about Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, AOC, Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner, along with scores of others. I can't think of anything more ripe for mockery than that shower. But none of our alleged comedians will touch it with a barge pole. Because everything that passes for entertainment has to tow the party line. Now, here's where Americans will crow about the freedom of speech that they enjoy. And I'm sorry, but that's nonsense. You can't sing the virtues of your own freedom of speech when the actual American president has been kicked off the internet. Yes, Americans are free from criminal charges, though not civil suits. But that really isn't the issue. 
It's not the threat of jail time that inhibits people's expression. That's just the dusting of snow on the tip of the iceberg. The rock goes much deeper than that. And it affects America as much as it does everywhere else. George Orwell, John Stuart Mill and Alexis de Tocqueville wrote extensively on how social pressure is far more effective at constraining freedom of speech than any legislation. Recent events have borne that out, and such issues affect America too. Mill wrote over 200 years ago about the cancel culture that prevails today. He concluded, There's no parity between the feeling of a person for his own opinion and the feeling of another who is offended at him holding it. No more than between the desire of a thief to take a purse and the desire of the right owner to keep it. Orwell also wrote expansively on what Mill called the yoke of opinion. And he concluded that at any given moment there is a dominant orthodoxy to offend against which needs a thick skin and sometimes means cutting one income in half for years on end. Obviously, for about 15 years past, the dominant orthodoxy, especially among the young, has been left. The key words are progressive, democratic and revolutionary, while the labels which you must at all costs avoid having gammed upon you are bourgeois, reactionary and fascist. Almost everyone nowadays is progressive, or at least wishes to be thought so. Published in 1948, that could have been written yesterday. Today's radicals are nowhere near as progressive as they'd like to think. They're just deeply ignorant of all that's gone before. But while this culture has always been with us, there are peaks and troughs. And we are climbing a peak of censorious intolerance and punitive retribution right now. Our society has rarely been more judgmental and less forgiving than it is at this moment. And despite their proclamations to the contrary, that's as true of America as much as anywhere else. How many Americans have been banned or silenced on the internet? How many have lost their jobs because of their opinions? How many conservative lecturers have been gagged or sacked at American universities? How many students driven from campus or bullied into silence? How many feel unable to express their opinion in public or online? How many are deleted and silenced every day? Roseanne Barr is just one example. A formerly successful comedian whose career and whose freedom of speech have been utterly ended. The number of cases like her is legion. And this phenomenon grows worse every single day. In Britain, the courts grow bolder and our authoritarian tyrants more arrogant with every passing moment. And the same is true of Canada, New Zealand, Ireland and most of the developed West. And America is being torn asunder by violent and seemingly irreparable division. Good comedy is still poking through braving the continual attacks and abuse of our woke commissars. But as bad as our current situation is, it looks set to keep worsening for some time yet. Talentless fools like Nish Kumar are seeking to bully and silence far more talented peers like Ricky Gervais. And while leftists have yet to start shooting comedians on stage, I suspect we'll see more violence fairly soon. If you'd like to support this channel, please like, subscribe and think about buying my books. They're called The Tyranny of the Left and they go into topics like this in much greater detail. They're available on the links below. Please do feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.